The first characteristic of a servant of God or of a minister found in verse 6 is that a minister brings truthful reports. A minister brings truthful report. So we are informed in verse 6 that um, there's this young man named Timothy, and we'll call him Tim for short. And so there's Timothy, and so Timothy, it says in verse 6, that he came back, he came to us, or came to Paul, and he came to Paul, and he gave four truthful praise reports from the people or of the people of Thessalonica. So what took place is that Timothy was interacting, he was engaging, he was kicking back, if you will, with the people there at Thessalonica. And so as he connected with them, he got the, 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 he had his hand upon the impulse of the sheep of what's going on because shepherds are called to know the condition of the flock and what's really going on in their lives. And so Timothy had a, a time to interact with them, to engage with them. So then he went back to Paul and he says, hey, Paul, 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 I'm here. What's happening, Paul? And so as he's now back with Paul, he gives Paul um, four truthful praise reports. And first off, according to verse six, it says that he brought Paul the report of good news. It says that in verse, yeah, brought good news. Timothy has come to us from you and brought us good news. And so it was a blessing that Paul was to hear in his ears uh, to receive these good news about the spiritual state of the Thessalonians that these people have and have been faithful walking with the Lord. And so it was good news. Paul says, there's good news. The people are, are in the word. The people are fellowshipping. The people are worshiping. People are praying. And those are characteristics um, of a good news of a person that you want to be known for. You, you want to be. You want to be a believer that someone want to say, yeah, I know about Eddie. I know about this person. I know about that person. Hey, yeah, I haven't seen him for, for a while, but guess what? They're in the word. They're praying. They're worshiping. They're, they're with they're, they're, they're seeking God. And, and how could you not be happy about that? How could you not rejoice over that? And so Paul was just blessed to hear those good news um, from Timothy about the, the people. And it's always a blessing to hear good news, isn't it? Especially, especially when it's concerning a person's spiritual life. And, and so the Bible speaks about how it's important to receive good news. Proverbs 25, verse 25 says, As cold water, especially to like a hot, and a hot day, as cold water to a weary soul, so is good news from a far country. And so we as believers may encourage you in this respect Take in, drink in the, the, the living water of the good news of what God is doing and what people are doing as they're following the Lord. So take in, drink in the good news. And the reason why it's so important to drink in the good news because this world is blanketed. This world is filled with people that are so critical and so cynical and so negative and it's just all around us through the media and through even people that we work with or maybe even the family also as well and so you could only um uh, take in so much negativity in, in yourself and and then and then be, and then you'll become um, pessimistic and so and negative and 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 so so be careful on what you take and and be, and be may you be like the uh, like you're eating a watermelon some people are going to be eating a lot of watermelon today um, and just take in the good and throw out the seat and and praise and praise God that what he's doing because I got to tell you God is moving God is moving all over this world. God is moving, and the, and the spirit is saving souls. I mean, so so much good is taking place. I've I heard of a church that they baptized like twelve hundred people, and I saw that post. I was like, yes, <laughs> yes, the body of Christ. It's doing something, and praise God. How could you not rejoice when, when, when so much good is taking place in people's lives? Souls are getting saved, and, and so take in the good news. And so let's be believers that are filled with joy. Um, second report that Timothy came to Paul and gave to him, it's also found in verse 6. Paul reported to or Timothy reported to Paul of their faith. Notice that it speaks about that. Um, brought us good news of your faith. And so their, their faith was growing leaps and bounds. 
How does faith come? How do you how do you grow in your faith? Faith comes by hearing and hearing what? The word of God. So they were in the word of God and so their faith was strong. They were standing firm in the Lord and in and, and the, and the rock of the word of God, not in sand. And so they didn't walk according to their feelings. They didn't walk according to sight. They walk according to their faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. My goodness, if you walk by your by sight this day and age, yeah, you're going to be depressed. You walk by sight and what's going on in the church world, yeah, you think, man, the, the body of Christ is it's so unhealthy. And you see all that, but there's so much good taking place. There's good that's taking place here at Calvary Montclair. Wake up. Victor, Victor Mark said, spoke about that when he was here. Um, and I, I didn't know what he was going to say, you know. And so, when, you know, when you give a mic to somebody, you have no clue what's going to come, 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 come out to them. And, and you don't talk, hey, say this or say that. And, and so... And so from, and, and there's, there's people where, where um, when, when they talk, I listen. And, and I, I just do, um, Franklin Graham is, is one. And to me, he's like a national spiritual state, uh, state person, uh, like his dad was. And so I, I, I listen to what, to what he says. He's like a, a, a mouthpiece um, from God. And by the way, um, Franklin Graham, they invited Calvary Montclair to, to um, connect with them. Um, and they're going to be doing a huge outreach October the 2nd in San Bernardino. Um, I think it's called the Orange Fairgrounds or the Orange Sh Showgrounds. Or, um, I, um, I never knew that it, that was exist. I had to look, at, look, look that up. And so they're going to be doing that huge outreach. And so we got in contact because I'm one of their, um, their national, international chaplains. I'm a chaplain for the Billy Graham organization. And so they connected with the chaplains here in Southern California. And so we've been having prayer meetings um, every Thursday at 930 to cover this um, um, move of God. I'm going to say event because it's not an event. Um, with God, there's no events. There's moves of God. And so this move of God on October 7th, um, 2nd. And so next week, we're, we're going to show like a, a, a video of what's going to be happening. And it's going to be powerful. And um, Franklin Graham will be coming coming to town. I've supplied them with the statistics. And I have from, from um, uh, the county supervisor, I was given um, information about um, this um, uh, statistics on uh, where the, the state is, um, where the uh, San Bernardino um, mm -hmm. County is, um, and uh, demographics and, and, and as such. Um, and so let's see, let's see what, what the Lord wants to do. So they want, it's just almost similar to like a, um, a harvest crusade that they do. So they, they're seeking counselors, security, and, and so forth. And then uh, I, tr I transferred all the information over to Frontside too, because what happens here, uh, uh, we're one with Frontside, so they could be involved as well. And so it's gonna be, it's gonna be wonderful. And so, so I, I, I see what, what, um, um, what Franklin says, and, and I listen, I listen to what, what uh, Charlie Kirk speaks about, as well as Victor Marks, and and um, people like people like that that um, are are in tune to the Lord and um, that are they're following, and so it, it's important to be connected. It's important to listen. God, what are you doing? What do you want to do? Because the Lord wants to do His move, and so so let's be connected. Let's hear good news, and and let's 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 cause people's faith to to grow. And that's a, the praise report that Paul received from Timothy that the people there that they're walking to and uh, consistently in their faith and they were trusting God even in times of affliction that they were going through. The third report that was given over to Paul, it's also found in verse 6, is that Paul reported uh, Timothy reported to Paul of their love. Notice that in verse 6 it says that you, good news of your faith and also your love. So they were growing in the love uh, in the Lord Jesus Christ because that's what matters. When it's all said and done, it's the love of Christ and, and to know the love. And that was Paul's prayer for, for the people always that people would know how much the Lord loves them. It says in the book of Ephesians chapter 3 verse 18, the Bible teaches, it says from Paul, he says, uh, may you have the power to understand. So, so it's a prayer that we will comprehend, that we will get it, that, that we would understand um, and to understand as all God's people should, how wide and how long and how high and how deep is his love for us. And so, so you, you show me a Christian that, that is saturated, that is swimming in the deep end of the love of God. You're gonna, I'm going to show you a healthy believer there. And so the Christianity, it, it's not based upon performance. It's based on receiving, receiving all the Lord has done for us. We are responders. We are responders to his, to his love. We love him because he what? 
he first loved us. So we're like, you want to love me? Okay, but, but, but I, I've cursed your name. I lived in rebellion. Yeah, I want to love you, and I want to heal you. I want to minister to you. I want to take that hard heart and give you a, a soft heart, and I want to transform your life from the inside out. And so, and the Lord does that, and that's the, he lures in the, in the business, if you will, to transform people's life, not through demands, but through love. And, and, and so and that's what he does, that the Lord overwhelms us. And so may we just be in the sun, literally, r- baking in the sun and, and watch us blossom for the Lord. If you, if you walked up the, the ramp, if you walked up the ramp, uh, you're, you're going to see two plants. You're going to see one plant that's uh, more in the sun, and you're going to see, um, watch when we walk out, you, 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 if you didn't notice it, I mean, don't do it right now, but, <laughs> but, but, but afterwards. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I hope so. Um, so you're going to see one that's, that's in the sun. Flowers are just so beautiful. You're going to see another one, which I put near the elevator. It's not in the sun. And, and um, you, you could tell. Let's be those plants that's in the sun, and let's watch our lives just blossom for the Lord. And, and, and just rest in His love. And, uh, and that's abiding in Christ. And that's what I love about Christianity. Christianity sets us apart from, from every other, and I don't like ca- us calling this religion because we're in a relationship, but every other one, um, following Muhammad, um, Islam, it's all based on works and you're, you always live in an insecurity knowing if you have done enough good works and you're always in a state. And then you know, you know, and I may not say it, but I'm just going to say it. And you, you never know if you're going to enter into a so-called paradise, which doesn't exist. Um, and only if you um, um, hurt and kill the infidels. Who are the infidels? The Jewish believers and, and um, the, the, the Americans, the people, the, the people that, um, that follow the Lord. Because we're not following the, the, right, the right God. And so, so that's how you know that you get like a free ticket straight in if you do that. Otherwise, you live in a state of insecurity. I praise God that being a believer in the Lord, I don't live in a state of insecurity. I look at the cross of Christ. And I'm saying the, the finished work has been done by my Lord Jesus Christ. When he said it is finished, it is finished indeed. The veil has been ripped from the top to the bottom. And I can enter into the holies of holies. And I could pour out my heart to him. And I could praise him. And it's all because of Jesus. And that's why we speak about Jesus, 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 Jesus. Because it's all about Jesus Christ. He has set the captive free. So we praise him. And we, we thank the Lord. And so it's important to learn about the love of Christ. Learn about the love. If, if I would encourage you to, to zero in on, on, on a particular study, it would be learning the love of God, learning the grace of God. And, and when, you, when you learn about God's grace, you're going to be gracious with yourself and you can be gracious with other people. And, and so there's so much that we can learn. And we're just touching the, the ice tip, um, God's people, on his love. And, and so let's, let's get deeper. Let's get deeper into the love of God. Let's get deeper into the grace of God and the peace of God. And once you get deeper in the grace and peace of God, and it's free to have the knowledge, by the way, and, and we learn more of the Lord, it will transform our life, and, and it just really will. Now, the, the fourth um, tr- uh, truthful praise report that, um, that Timothy brought to, to um, uh, Paul, and, and I'm, I need to pause here real, real quick. And I keep mentioning truthful. When you bring a report, it can't be exaggerated. It can't be um, colored. It needs to be accurate. When I surround myself by people, I, I surround myself by people that give me accurate reports. Not inflated, not exaggerated, not colored, not emotional, but information that's truthful. And if I'm finding out that I'm getting reports that exaggerate it, that's um, inflated, that's colored, what do you think I'm going to do? I'm not going to listen to that person. How could you? Because information is not truthful. It's not solid. I need truth. Truth sets me free. Paul brought truthful, truth. not exaggerated information over. May we be people that when we give people information, may we not try to color their perception on someone else in a negative way. May we give them an, an, an accurate information. May, may it be truthful, may not be exaggerated. And then I'll, I'll, I'll say that, like, that they're really, everyone's saying this. Everyone is saying that. May I ask you, let's take this, just listen, let's unpack this a little bit. Everyone, 
could you kind of define, and I don't, be, I don't want to come across being mean, but I need clarity. What does everyone mean? Five, two, three, 21. Um, everyone doesn't like this. Um, who's everyone? Well, this person, I've, oh, two. Out of a hundred? I would definitely listen to the tools and their concern, but you can't make a, a, a decision that's going to impact everyone, the, the 98 people, based on two people. And, and so, so I don't, I'm one that I don't go for everyone's. Um, I don't go for everyone's doing it. No, no, no. Can you tell me uh, specifically? And could you give me their name too? Or could we have a conversation and, and we could... T- discuss it if they're really concerned I I'm I would li- I would love to listen to th- their concern and and um, and hopefully uh, the benefit of the doubt was given too and so I don't know why I said all that but but because Timothy brought truthful information and so let's not be people that exaggerate information let's be accurate precise truthful um, on, on it and if you if you are a person like that I'll tell you people will will constantly come to you because they know you're just gonna give no, nothing but the truth. Was it, remember that old show um, back in the day? Uh, what was that, Detective? Nothing but the truth. Um, truth. Inspector Gadget, was that, right? was that what it was? <laughs> <laughs> gotcha, got, yeah, nothing but the truth. Facts. Oh, facts, all right. Nothing but, all right. All right. Oh, carry, carry on. Yeah, so, the, so t- Timothy, the, the, the fourth report that he brought um, to Paul is that it says in verse 6 that his kind memories that he remembrance of us, greatly desiring um, to us. And so it was a blessing to know that, the, that Paul left a great godly impression with them, that he had good, they had good memories of Paul and the other ministers that was with Paul. And he says, we have good remembrance of you and we desire to see you. And so that's just wonderful that they wanted to be reconnected. And may we have a good testimony about us. May not people say, oh, I'm glad they're gone. Ooh, yeah. A blessed us attraction there. You know, may, may they be like, no, I can't wait to see them. And we haven't seen each other. And, and to be refreshed on what's going on and what God's doing. And to have that, 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 that fellowship, that koinonia, that connection is so, so good. Last week we were, we were blessed and out, out of the blue. And I got that message from John Bonner from Peru that he wanted to go. And I thought, well, what a blessing. Of all the churches in Southern California that he would want to come from Peru to come here and give a praise report on what's God taking place. He reached, he reached out to us. And then knowing, too, I didn't know that it was a divine appointment for, for uh, Susie and her family to be reconnected with them because they would known them for, for, for a long time. And so God, God does that. God, God just causes us just to reconnect so we can hear a praise reports. And afterwards, we'll, we'll connect and we'll fellowship. I'll, I'll get you right afterwards if that's okay. Yeah. Um, so now the second characteristic of a minister in verse 7 is that a minister continues to fight the good fight of faith. Notice with me in verse 7, it says, Therefore, brethren, in all, notice, in and all our affliction and distress. A characteristic of a minister, a minister continues to fight the good fight of faith. So Paul is saying that because of their faithfulness to the Lord, their faithfulness to the Lord, I love this, in the midst of their affliction, in the midst of their distress, they were a huge encouragement to Paul's heart because they were moving forward in the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because when you look at yourself, you're going to be in stress. And they didn't look at Beth themselves. They weren't in stress. When you look at the world around you, you're going to be in distress because it's just out of control. And they weren't looking at the world around them, but they were looking to the Lord because when you look at the Lord, you're going to find rest. You look at yourself, you'll be in stress. You look at the world, you'll be in distress. You look at the Lord, you'll be in rest. And so these believers were in rest. So, um, Timothy told Paul that, that, that they're, they're moving forward even in the midst of affliction and even in the midst of distress. And so Paul was encouraged. Paul was comforted. It says in verse 7 that he was comforted. He was comforted knowing that these believers, they are continuing to march forward. They were soldiers for God. March on. And, and, and we are called to be a soldier for, for the Lord to, to fight the good fight of faith especially during times, during uh, distressing times. And that's what we're called to do. We have decided to follow the Lord. No turning back. We're moving forward. So let's fight the good fight of faith. We fight the good fight of faith, not only in great times. We're like, ooh, all the hallelujah times. No, you fight the good uh, good fight of faith in the valley lows too. I'm going to move forward. 
I'm going to move forward. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 12 says, Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold of eternal life, to which you were also called, and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. So the fact of the matter is, we're going to all have times of distress. We're all going to have times of affliction. That, that's a given. Um, Jesus, when he speaks about that, that, you know, you want to follow me, you're going to have times of um, stress and tribulation, but take a good cheer for I have overcome the world. And so we move forward. And the way we move forward is that during difficult times, we set our eyes above the situation, not on the situation. And that's what I level praise does. Praise always lifts your eyes above situations and it puts you in perspective on the Lord. Where does my help come from? Oh, my help comes from the maker of the heavens and earth. And I've learned when I'm just thinking about You will definitely be distressed and, and depressed, no doubt about that. But you look at our God is greater. Our God is powerful. And our God is going to move um, in the midst of this situation because he's faithful in the past. He's been faithful in the uh, and he'll be faithful in the present. So 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 Paul is just thankful that they're fighting the good fight of faith. They're, they're not sinking, but they're standing um, in, in the Lord. So we're called to set our eyes, to put our eyes on the Lord and look to him. The Bible speaks about that in the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verse 3 and 4. It says, for consider him. Who's him? Him is Jesus. Consider Jesus who endured such hostility from sinners. What? Sinners are going to hurt the saints? Absolutely. Why? Because you let your, lo your light so shine, and they're not going to thank you. They're not going to pat you on the head. They're not going to say, oh, thank you for making me feel bad. Thank you for making con um, um, be convicted. I didn't make you feel bad. I didn't make you con convicted. The Holy Spirit is, is using your own conscience to cause you to um, be that way, feel that way. And um, that's on you, buddy. <laughs> you know, that's on, yeah. I'm just living my life before you, and I'm being salt. And what's salt? There's a lot of salt that's going to be thrown on some carne asada tonight, right? And what, what does salt do? It brings flavor. So you bring flavor to an unflavorable atmosphere. And so if you want to continue to be in an unflavorable atmosphere, that's on you. I'm going to bring the salt, baby. I'm going to spot <laughs> I'm Hispanic, man. I'm going to spice it up. <laughs> you know, right? And so we spice things up in the Lord, right? And so, so they get upset because they want to continue to live in a lie. They want to continue to live in deceit. They want to continue to be in a dis de depressing environment, a toxic work environment. Like, you all want to continue this toxic work environment? That's on you. But I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be a toxic because my God's not toxic. He's healthy. And, and he has set me free. And I'm going to stand in my liberty. You could go gossip about each other and the boss and throw each other in the bus all you want. <laughs> but, but for me, my house, I'm going to be speaking truth and love and, and, and live the way. I'm not going to um, cut corners. I'm not going to do this or I'm not going to do that because that's not God honoring. Because I'm called every single day. To, to, to walk justly, to walk humbly. What is required of me? I'd like to know what's required of me. I could work uh, in those lines. Requiring. So if a boss, tell, a boss tells a supervisor, tells him what, what's required of you, A, B, and C. Okay, cool. We're on the same page. What does God require of you? Well, it says in Micah chapter 6, verse 8, God requires of you that you live justly. And so if something's happening within the office that's not just, I'm sorry, I can't go there. You ask me to go there, you're asking me to violate my conscience. Are you asking me to violate my conscience for the record? And, and I can't go there. I'm going to walk justly and, 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 and walk humbly before my God. And that's how I'm called to, to live life, to have integrity. And you stand for integrity and righteousness, and you're not a jerk about it. You're not mean about it. You're, you're not getting your, your Bible and pointing at them. So I'm going to take a picture real quick. I'm going to put it on social media. You know, you're not, you're, you're just like, I'm just living life as the Lord lived, lived life. And so I just want to please the Lord. And that's to say, at the end of the day, I just have convictions that, that came from Scripture. That, that's it. And, and I can't violate that. I can't do that to my body. I can't do that to my mind and whatever it may be. And you quote that. And so we all have convictions. If mankind doesn't have convictions, who are we really then? Are we just go by the tide of, of society? That's not freedom. That's chaotic. That, that's being under control. And I'm not called, as, as, as a person of faith, I'm not called to live that way. 
you you would if you say all that I don't I can't repeat all that that it all just came to my mind right now that was in my notes. See, uh, <laughs> but you live life that way. That's on them. You have a clear you sleep like a baby at night. You have a clear conscience to, to live that that way. So so we look to the Lord. And, and, and he gives us the strength. And so, so maybe we look to the Lord to encourage us in times of distress, in times of affliction. And so Paul was blessed by their faith. And may you see other people's pl- of faith and be blessed by them. And I already refer to Charlie and to Victor Marks. I'm blessed by their faith. I follow them on, on um, in Instagram and social media and all that. I, I follow them. I don't, I don't spend a whole lot of time in there. I just don't have that kind of time on, on my hand. But when I do, though, and I'll specifically go to their page. Why? It pumps my faith. I mean, the stuff that he's doing, I'm all like, man, I'm not even doing half of that. And, and it, it provokes me. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24 and 25 says, you, you get together with believers so your faith could get provoked. I need to get provoked. You know, a, a, a person that wants to excel to do better, the best thing to do is say if it's in golf, get around people that are golf really, really well. You get provoked. And you get encouraged. You get stretched. And you're like, Man, man, I'm, I'm shooting 100, and they're shooting in their 70s and 80s. I'm getting provoked or, or shooting a firearm, and they're so precise on how they do that. I want to be precise in and, and, and education, whatever it may be. But if you're just not hanging around with people that are not stretching you, encouraging you, and, and, and we, we're called to do that. We're called to look to others. And so um, Paul was encouraged by the people of, of their faith. He was comforted that they were growing in, in the Lord. The third characteristic in verse 8 is that a minister stands fast in the Lord. A a minister stands fast in the Lord. I love verse 8. Verse 8 says, For now we live if you stand fast in the Lord. Don't miss this. So Paul is saying is something profound and very interesting here. He says he lives to see people maturing in their faith in the Lord. Wow. That's what makes Paul ticks. That's what makes Paul get up. disciple he wants people to be watered in God and the Lord and and so he wants to see them grow so he wanted to um, have them stand fast in the Lord so their entire so Paul's entire purpose was to see others and according to verse 8 that they would stand fast in the Lord what a good mission to live your life for I'm here to live life that you will grow and stand fast in the Lord that's why I'm living I'm here to to defend you, to come alongside you, to stand with you so you can stand in the Lord. You're thinking about others. Charlie Kirk uh, spoke about that on Father's Day. You know, w- one um, characteristic that, that men and young men um, are lacking is that drive because they're not responsible to do something. Um, and so if they have this drive in here, and, and it's good to let's tie this into a scripture here, if that drive in you is to cause other people to grow in their faith, that's an internal drive. That's a drive that honors the Lord, and that's going to go far, and you're going to never, ever um, be incomplete in that because there's always work to be done in that. And so the Lord wants to use you to groom others, to mold you. And that's why being in small groups, as Diane mentioned, and the, and the men get together, and I encourage you men, get together. When we have the, the, the every other week men's group here um, on Thursday, we met last week, so the next one is, um, not this week, the following week, um, come. So you could provoke another, provoke each other, and, and be be um, um, to to grow in the Lord. And then you may think, oh, I don't want to go. Go. It's not about you. It's about you provoking others to grow in the Lord. You could encourage each other. You could sharpen each other. Iron sharpens iron, and that's what we're called to do. And that's what um, Paul said. So he stood. He. and to bless others. And the word stand fast, according to verse 8, the word stand fast speaks of, uh, about, it speaks of an army that refuses to retreat in the face of the enemy. Encourage them. Stand fast. And like a boxer that's in the ring and the boxer comes back to the corner and the coach encourages them, throws water in his face, slaps him a couple times and says, stand fast, get back into the fight. 
Don't lay down. And that's what we're called to do. Get back into the fight. We provoke each other. So Paul lived his life to come alongside others so they could stand firm in, in the Lord. And because Paul knew serving the Lord and knowing the Lord, that's life. And that's life more abundantly. And so we're called to stand fast in other people's faith to encourage them. First Corinthians 16 verse 13 speaks about that. It says, watch. We're you supposed to watch. We're supposed to watch uh, as we are called. Uh, we're, we're called to to hold to two scriptures. In the Old Testament, we're called to watch to be sons of Issachar. We're supposed to know the times that we live in. And I'm one pastor that I look for the times that we're, we we live in. I look at a national level with Tony Perkins. And um, this year, they didn't have a national pastor's conference in, in Washington, D.C. But in the past, I'll travel to Washington so I could get at a national level the spiritual temperature of the of the nation. And then, um, then at a, um, a state level, um, we have a friend, and he was actually going to be back here in September, I believe, with Frank. He's a chaplain for a, at the state um, capitol. Um, he's been here before. He's going to come, and I keep in touch. Was taking place at a, a spiritual level, at a national, at a um, national level, a state level, a county level. I'm, I'm taking place. Was taking place in San Bernardino County with Kurt Hagman, and then at a local level, was taking place in the the, the mayors. And so I got my hand upon the impulse. What's going on and seeking God? What, what's going on? So we're called to know the, no, to be sons of Issachar in the Old Testament, but at the same time we're called to be like Diane quoted the scripture, and which was found in Acts chapter seventeen verse eleven, that that the the um, the disciples, uh, the Bereans, that they they tested everything uh, according to the word of God. So we look what's going on. We're watchmen on the wall. We're looking going on, and we're testing everything that comes our way with the word of God. So they're saying um, ab about this. This is coming coming down the pipes. Where does that line up with scripture? All this policy is coming down the pipes. Where does that line up with scripture? Everything has to be lined up to scripture. Why? Because the word of God is the final authority. That's why it does. And so we, we line up all national policies, state policies, uh, local policies, even within our own home. Where does all this line up with scripture? And if it has a match in scripture, well, cool, we'll move forward because we want to be in the will of God according to his, his word. And so, so we stand fast in, in our faith. And, and so times of, of our faith is going to get tested, and that's healthy. It's been said that faith that cannot be tested cannot be trusted. A faith that cannot be tested cannot be trusted. And so, and I believe in this, this last year's in this pandemic that has been referred to, that the, she, that the tree was definitely um, shooken and, and, and all the, 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 the dead, um, uh, unfruitful lemons, you know, all that came to the ground. Not that people are lemons, <laughs> but that just came to, came to the ground. But those that were fruitful, those that were healthy, they stayed. And look at you all, we all went through it. And look at, we came to the other, other side and we became stronger because of the Lord and we were tested. And, and God knows that, that um, testing our faith is so, how, that it's important. Know that, that God, he does try our faith. He tries our faith not to destroy it, but to develop it to develop it so we can stand fast and we will be unmovable times of trials, times of, of difficulties, and know that there's nothing, there's nothing that reveals the reality of a person's faith, um, the reality of it, but only through fiery trials of affliction. It shows you where you're really, really, really at. And so we want God to redeem our afflictions. We want God to redeem our distresses. Why? Because we want God to burn away, burn, baby, burn, burn, burn all those things away. That's not of the Lord. That's not of the Lord. So we could be liberated. So we could re be liberated and, and rejoice. And that's good reason to light fireworks tonight, that we are liberated, that, we, that we're not in bondage. We light fireworks because we're not in bondage anymore. We light fireworks and all that color and all that bang and all of that. We celebrate independence, independence as a nation and independence from the flesh. Isn't it wonderful that, that you could interact with anybody and then your heart could be totally have a heart of purity towards them? Isn't that liberating? A lot of guys are not liberated in that area. God wants you to be liberated in that area. Isn't it wonderful to be liberated where you don't have to exaggerate? You could be a truth teller. That's liberation. Isn't it liberating where you don't need to gossip or whatever it may be? That's, that's liberation. Isn't it being liberated that, that you could interact with anyone and, and, and not getting upset? You know, like you're getting in the freeway and someone just like cuts you off and normally before the old man would, you know, 
tell them what you really, th really think, you're like, oh, whatever. I mean, getting to that point of saying, oh, whatever, they must have a bad day or they must be running late for work or, or, or they truly need Jesus. <laughs> and, um, and, and so to, to, be, to be liberated, to be liberated that you don't need to react. You know, I, I heard a, a, a read, some of you guys read this sad story a few years ago where a couple kids and, and teenagers, and I, I could totally see my son doing something like this. You know, going and they're just, you know, pl couple of friends you go knock on someone's house and, and, and ring their doorbell and what do they call that? A ring ditch or something like that, ding ding dong ditch. Yeah, I could. I I could did when I was that age. I did, I did stuff like that. You know, a lot of us did. Um, man, you know, you you hit the wrong doorbell. Homeboy gets all mad, gets in his car. How many of you guys have heard heard of that story? Gets in his car. What does he do? Three teenage kids fo follows them, rams their car into a tree. Sure. Boom. At least one young man died at the scene. Wow. Now this guy's incarcerated for life for murder. Why? Because he wasn't liberated in the area of anger. Mm -hmm. You know, to 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 live life to be liberated in those areas, that is true freedom indeed to light fireworks tonight. Amen. And that's where God has come to set us free. Then we're not in bondage to it. That, that like, hey, if, I, if I want to do that, I, I'll do it, but I'm not in bondage to it. If I want, I could watch it show, and like, I'm not in bond, there's no bondage to the believer. There's no bondage to the believer, and that's because of the Lord Jesus Christ. And, 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 so, and so it's wonderful. It's wonderful to live in a, a free way. You know, to interact with someone without being jealous or envious or like, oh, I wish I had that. That's so wonderful that you could bless somebody. You know, someone gets a, a new boat or a new house, and you're like, oh, that would be nice. And you're like, hey, I'm thankful for you. Praise God that, you, that you're blessed that way. And to, be tr to, to truly mean that, wow. That is just so cool, and and because uh, you're content in the Lord. Now, the fourth um, characteristic of a minister found in verses nine and ten: a minister gives thanks to God. Verses nine and ten it says, "For what thanks can we render to God for you, for all the joy with which we rejoice for your sake before our God, night and day, praying exceedingly that we may see your face." and perfect what is lacking in your faith. So the fourth char characteristic of a minister, a minister gives thanks to God. So Paul renders thanks to God for five reasons in those two verses. The first reason why Paul renders thanks to God for them, in verse 9, it says that Paul thanks God for their joy that he had with the people at Thessalonica. So he thanks God for the joy of them. When, when he thinks about them, he has joy. So Paul rejoiced as his cup was overflowing as he thought about the people of God. And we do that. I think about our congregation. I think about people here and there's, and, there, and, and, and I think about you, I see your face during the week and I, and I think and my, my heart is filled with, with joy. And that's how, what happened in Paul's heart. His, how, his heart filled with, with joy. If you're going through a difficult time, be like a Paul, be like a Paul and, um, and, and see people's face and, and you will rejoice. Um, secondly, in verse 10, Paul thanked God for uh, because he prayed for them night and day. So Paul thanked God by praying for them night and day, and that's found in verse 10. So Paul is one, he constantly prayed for them. So Paul prayed for them, and it was habitual. It wasn't sporadic, and, and, that, and that happened because they were on Paul's heart. If you want to be a prayer warrior, have people be upon your heart, and you'll start covering them in prayer. Number three, Paul thanks God, Rangers thanks to God, number three in verse 10, because um, Paul thanked God by praying exceedingly for them. He is praying exceedingly for them. What does that mean? that he was intently, he was extremely fervent in his prayers for them. He was truly what is called a prayer warrior. He got down to business, baby. You know, he went into his war room and made war in the heavenlies for people's lives and, and, and that their eyes will be open and they could be set free. And that's how Paul prayed for them. It wasn't a casual prayer. Man, he got down to business and he prayed for people and it was war. 
floor. It was beautiful. And so in verse uh, number four, the fourth way he gives thanks to God, in verse 10, Paul gives thanks to God because he wanted to see their face, according to verse 10. So Paul prayed specifically for them, each of them, as he thought about them in the prayer. They were, they were not numbers in a church. They were people that the God loves, and, and they were people that were made in the image of God. And number five, and according to verse 10, Paul thanks God as he prays for them unselfishly. He prays for them unselfishly at the end of verse 10. I want to point that out where it says, Night and day praying exceedingly that we may see your face and perfect what is lacking in your faith. I like that. Paul prayed that they wouldn't lack in their faith. So Paul prayed that they would not lack anything that God graciously has given them. He wanted them to know about God's grace. He wanted them to know about God's love. He wanted them to know all that God had for them. And then now, um, finally, in verses 11 through 13, we're going to see uh, the fifth characteristic of a minister, and, and that is a minister praise. Notice with me as we move into a conclusion, conclusion in verses um, 11 through 13, where it says, Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus Christ direct our way to you, and may the Lord make you increase and abound in love to one another and to all, just as we do to you, so that he may establish your hearts blameless in holiness before our God and Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. So Paul wraps us up with uh, four ways he prays for them. And the four ways he prays for them, these are four ways that we are to pray for our loved ones. These are four ways that we are to pray for our loved ones. Number one, found in verse 11, that God would direct Paul's way to them. The word direct means to make a pathway straight to reconnect with them. So let's pray that, that God would reconnect people's heart and, and minds. And I know during this whole pandemic, there, there's been some interesting perspectives on people's views on certain things. And may the Lord cause us to be reconnected with them, to have conversation with them, have prayer, prayer for them. Paul was praying that God will remove all obstacles and hindrances that will keep them from not being with each other. And he prays in that way because Paul recognized that his mission was spiritual in nature. So he prays to the Lord to make the pathway straight, to move obstacles away. The second way that Paul prays for them, according to verse 12, is that, that, that he prays that the Lord will increase, that they would increase and abound in their love for one another. That's a powerful prayer to pray for yourself and for others, according to verse 12, that you would, you would increase and abound in love. So that's important. Why? Because love is a genuine mark of every believer, and love sets Christians apart from people of the world. John 13, verse 34 says, a new commandment I give to you to love one another, to hate one another. No, it doesn't say that. To hate because you go to a different church. No, to love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciple if you love one uh, uh, another. And so if somebody's uh, talking about division, like Jesus did, he knelt down, and um, may you knelt down, and you just write, love one another on the ground. Um, and so we are called to increase and abound in our love for one another. And I know that we all need to inc in improve in that way. Let's continue to increase and abound for our love for the body of Christ. And then the third way that Paul prays for them, according to verse 13, that they will be established. The word established means to be strengthened so you'll be stable. And what a great prayer to pray for people, that they'll be strengthened, that they'll be stable in their faith, that they'll remain faithful, strong to the very end, no matter what happens in their future. And we'll say, we'll finish you, we'll see you at the finish line when Jesus comes back for us. And so 1 Corinthians 1.8 says, He will keep you strong to the end so that you will be blameless on the day of the Lord Jesus Christ in which God has called you into fellowship with his son um, and he is faithful. And then the fourth and final way to pray according to verse 13 is that we are to pray that we will be blameless in holiness. The word blameless means to be free from fault or defect. The word ho holiness means to live inwardly and outwardly a life of purity. And know our motivation our motivation to live this way, to pray this way, is that the Lord is coming back for us. And when the Lord comes back for us, notice in verse 13 at the end of it, it says, um, at his coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. So our brothers and sisters, when, when um, 
they're home with the, the Lord right now, we're all going to come back together in unity and one because of the Lord's love for, for everyone. Praise God for that. Our five takeaways or five action items to apply to our life today. Number one is we, as a minister, we're called to bring truthful reports. A minister call, is called to bring truthful reports. Number two, a minister continues to fight the good fight of faith. Number three, a minister stands fast in the Lord. And number four, a minister gives thanks to God. And lastly, number five, a minister prays. 